Ghost Call. The Prayer Rug of Nana Saib. A story of freelance diplomacy, intrigue, and mystery in the Far East. To engage in a forlorn hope, fraught with grave risk and untold peril. To stand with their backs against a wall, grimly fighting against overwhelming odds in defense of a lost cause, is seemingly the breath of life to certain venturesome souls. Born every so often, their peculiar fascination for hazardous undertakings in strange, out-of-the-way corners of the earth passes far beyond the comprehension of the normal mind. Such a man is K.C. Smith. Thoroughly versed in Eastern dialects and customs, his haunts are the forbidden places of Oriental temples and mosques, or in the bazaars. Night may find him garbed as a true believer, worshipping at the feet of some hideous idol, or lying in the shadow of a caravanserai, listening for bits of information which may be useful to the ghost corps, that mystery-shrouded organization of freelance diplomats operating throughout the Near and Far East. Tonight... We find K.C. Smith and his chief, C.D. Baker, strolling through the Carnel Kalili, the great market center of Cairo and headquarters of the silk and carpet merchants. Any special idea in your mind, K.C., in coming to the Carnel Kalili this evening? No, nothing in particular, Baker. Only it's the greatest place in Cairo to pick up stray bits of information. If one knows how to listen. Of course, but I had an idea your chief sources of information were the mosques and native sarai. And the bazaars, chief. Don't overlook the bazaars. Merchants from all over the east come here to display and sell their wares. And Well, look there, for instance, that rug market. You'll find rugs and carpets from all over the east. Arabia, Persia, Afghanistan, even China. <laughs> and perhaps a bit of information we might find useful. Shall we go in? If you like. Now, there's something you don't often see in the Cairo markets, Chief. An auction. The prayer rock, ladies and gentlemen, is said to have belonged to a great Raj of India. A work of art. We'll make beads, please. One hundred piastres. One hundred piastres. Who will be two hundred? Funny-looking prayer rug, K.C. Nothing symmetrical in the pattern. A hundred piastres? Why, that's twenty shillings. More than it's worth. <laughs> One of my countrymen bidding, no doubt. I will bid 200 piastres for the rug. 200 piastres. Ladies and gentlemen, if a Hindu bid 200 piastres, it is an indication of the value of the rug. But it is not enough. I must hear more. 250. 300 piastres. 300 oh, piastres. That Hindu is boosting the bids. Evidently, he's interested in the rug. He's a rum-looking fellow. Do you recognize the caste mark tattooed on his forehead? No. He's not a Brahmin or a follower of Vishnu or Shiva. Sinister face, eh? Yes, the right eyebrow missing gives him that one-sided, leering expression. Listen. I will be 600 piastres. By Jove. 600 piastres for a piece of carpet not worth 20 shillings? Thank you, sir. If the bid is 600 piastres. Ladies and gentlemen, do I hear seven, seven, seven? 650, 650. 600, 600. Who will give me seven? At 600, the rug will go to the sahib there. Is that all? 600. Well, wait a minute, Ibib. Let's have a close-up of that carpet, Baker. Come on, this begins to look interesting. Don't be an ass, Casey. The thing isn't worth ten shillings. I never knew you to go in for this sort of thing. Oh, yeah, there's always got to be a first time, Baker. <laughs> Perhaps my interest in prayer rugs has only been dormant. I'm playing a hunch. Yeah, look at this pattern. Never saw anything like it. Those curious figures at intervals all along that tangled web of lines. Well, if that's a pattern... Well, no pattern at all. Baker, there's something funny about this carpet. I have a hunch it's a... It's a map of some sort. I'm going to have the thing. Got any money with you? <laughs> Your hunch is going to cost you something, my friend. However, go ahead. The auctioneer will take my check. Come, Effendi. The bid is 600 piaster. You have examined the rock? You will bid seven? 650. 700. Uh, 750. 850 piaster. 900. I bid 1,000 piaster for the rug. 1,100. That's enough, you idiot. 20 pounds for a bit of carpet that you can get anywhere for a tenth of that? He's reached his limit. Look at his face. 1,100 piaster for the rug. Praise Allah. There are some who appreciate the value of ancient art. 
You will be twelve, Sahib. I relinquish the rod to the Sahib. I do not care to go beyond his bead. Thank you, Bahadur. Let's get back to my rooms in the Hotel de Nil, Chief. I want to look at this thing under a magnifying glass. Come on. I still think you might as well have thrown your money in the city canal for all the good that ridiculous bit of carpet will ever do you. I... <laughs> okay, Chief, okay. I've bought something I've no earthly bit of use for, as you think. <laughs> I told you I was playing a hunch, and as you know, I seldom go wrong in my hunches. But great Scott, man, 1,100 piastres. Look, Baker, if the rug's worth that much to our Hindu friend, there's a darn good reason for it. I'm going to find out somehow where he comes in. Ali! Did you call, Kasi? Bring me a bottle of that old wine we got the other day. Yes, Kasi. Now, Baker, look through this magnifying glass here. If these lines and crosses in the pattern were drawn on paper, what would you say they were? Hmm, well, uh, possibly a map of some sort. Oh, the lines might be highways, roads, and trails, eh? And the crosses and dots... Cities, villages, or even mountains or hills. And what particular spot in India, or whatever country in the Orient that thing came from, would that be a chart of? Or, um, (laughs) perhaps your hunch doesn't go so far. Perhaps it does. There is one at the outer door, Kasi, who demands admittance. He comes to speak with the Saib, who today purchased a prayer rug in the Kanel Kalili. Ah, a Hindu Ali with a... A uh, strange mark tattooed on his forehead? On the right eyebrow missing? Yes, Cassie. Ah, you see, Baker? Perhaps the thing's beginning to work out. Uh, show him in, Ali. Aye, Cassie. Must have followed us from the bazaar. How else would he know where to look for you? Here he is. The Bada Ram Das Smith Evendi. Salam, Sahib. Salam, Bada. Salam, Salam. Das Bada. These Sahibs will pardon the intrusion... I come to speak of the little rug the presents bought early this evening. Be seated, Saib. The wine, Ali. None for me, thank you, Saib. I shall explain my presence as briefly as possible, as the hour is late and I do not wish to disturb the Saib. Oh, no intrusion, Bardur, and no need for haste. Well, what can I do for you? You uh, mentioned the uh, rug? The rug, Saib, yes. It was woven by an ancestor of mine. It has been in my family for many years. Some time ago it was stolen. I had it traced here to the Kahan El Kahalili, where the Sahib purchased it over my bead. Oh, I see. And uh, now... Uh... The presents paid 1,100 piaster for it. I offer double the amount if the Sahib will return the rug to me, its rightful owner. Twenty-two hundred piastres for a bit of old carpet. That the sahib does not understand. Intrinsically, the rug is worth perhaps fifty to seventy-five piastres. As an heirloom, it is priceless to me. Oh, of course, of course. And therefore, twenty-two hundred is far too much to pay for the rug. You see, Bahadur, my hobby is the collecting of ancient prayer rugs at any price. I have a great many of them in my uh, in my home in the United States. This one appeals to me because it's so entirely different from any I've yet seen. Yes, you see, he admires the uh, the strange pattern. Oh, yes, yes, that pattern. Uh, one might even imagine it to resemble a, a chart of some sort. <laughs> uh, perhaps hidden treasure, you know. Yes, such as a great cache of ivory hidden somewhere in Central Africa. Or a hoard of gold and jewels buried by the weaver of the carpet in some spot in the Afghan hills beyond the Khyber Pass or in the mountains of Nepal. I assure you, gentlemen, there is no secret chart of buried treasure concealed in the pattern of that rug. However, you will not consider my offer of 2,200 (laughs) piastres? Why, I'm extremely sorry, Bahadur, but you see, a, a hobby... I understand. I am sorry I cannot offer more. Oh, it isn't the money. I'd, I'd have gone much higher in my bids to get this particular piece. Well, you see, it's it's a hobby. Then there is no further reason for me to remain here. Sahib, I bid you gentlemen, 
Good night, sir. Salam, Ramdas Bahadur. Uh, Ali! Yes, Kasi. Ali, uh, show the gentleman out. I can see. Again, gentlemen, salam. 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 One moment, friend Ali. You could use money, a great deal of money. One is never unwilling to gather ripe fruit, Saib. Oh, good. Then listen. The little rug your master purchased today, I will give you 50 piastres if you place the rug in my hands tonight. 50 piastres? It is a deal of money, Saib. Yet not enough to compensate me for the loss of a good position. A hundred. A thousand piastres would not compensate me for the loss of so excellent a master, O oh, liberal one. Uh, you are a fool and have missed a good bargain. Open the door, then, that I may leave. As Ali turned his back to open the outer door, Ramdas snatched up a heavy bronze vase from a nearby stand. With a powerful swing, he crashed it down on Ali's unsuspecting head. Quickly, Ramdas opens the door, looks out into the dim corridor, and motions to two white-robed figures waiting in the shadows across the hall. Quickly they gather the unconscious Ali up in their arms and make their way swiftly, silently down the corridor toward the rear stairs. Ramdas slips back into the anteroom and softly closes the door. <laughs> 